What China is doing with regard to Taiwan, the United States cannot wrap their head around. Uh, the United States has been preparing for war against China via a Taiwan proxy for many years now, and that has not changed one bit. Soon in 2024, early 2024, we're going to see another election on the Straits of Taiwan. The political authority in Taiwan, which has autonomy, they are not their own state, but they have the autonomy to hold elections and elect leaders that they see as fit for them. Uh, they are going to elect a new president after a sweeping November 2022 defeat of the ruling Democratic Progressive Party on the island, which saw Tsai Ing-wen have to resign as the head of the Democratic Progressive Party, and uh, uh, was she was unable to run for president again. So it's uh, Lai ching te who is going to lead the party should he win. Now, what China is doing uh, militarily is constantly on the minds of the United States and on the minds of Taiwan separatists. So here you have, leading into the holiday season, Taiwan reporting more Chinese military activity as the election approaches. Taiwan reported Chinese warplanes and warships around the island, including aircraft crossing the sensitive media line of the Taiwan Strait as Beijing's military activities come within three weeks before Taiwan votes. The democratically governed Taiwan, which China claims as its territory, has complained for years, four years, of regular Chinese military patrols and drills near the island. Campaigning is underway for Taiwan's January 13th presidential and parliamentary polls. Relations with China are a point of contention. The Defense Ministry of Taiwan said that at 1.30, it had detected J-10, J-11, and J-16 fighters, as well as warning aircraft operating in the airspace north, middle, south of Taiwan, crossing a media, median line or areas close by, working with Chinese warships to carry out joint combat readiness patrols. Okay, so the median line once served as an unofficial barrier of two sides, but Chinese planes regularly fly over it. And it says it sent its own forces, Taiwan did, to monitor. China has not commented. But now, mean, meanwhile, the median line is not recognized by anybody. It's not recognized by international law. It's not recognized by China. Taiwan doesn't really have the ability to recognize anything because it's not a state. Uh, the one China principle is enshrined in international law, uh, to, uh, Resolution 2751. Uh, and... There's also the fact that uh, the United States and China have numerous agreements uh, indicating and cementing one China. But it's no it's no coincidence that we're talking about it like this now, okay? The U.S. and China are finally holding military talks after more than a year. You have U.S.'s top military uh, officer speaking with China's counterpart on December 21st. In a video call between the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Air Force General Charles Q. Browns, who spoke with General Liu Jianli of the People's Liberation Army Chief Joints of Staff, Brown emphasized the need for more communications between the two sides of risky aerial intercepts. And General Brown discussed the importance of working together to manage competition, avoid miscalculations, and direct line of communications. Um, so, essentially, this was a pretty big deal. Because I don't know if you remember from back in February 2023, early the, with the whole balloon incident, the United States had already not only had already cut off talks. Uh, this this first occurred during the August 2022 debacle of Nancy Pelosi visiting the island. But the United uh, uh, but after that, uh, China cut off military to military ties which were just reestablished after a huge period. It appeared that China wanted to before the balloon incident, the spy balloon incident that shook the world uh, in February 2023. Before that, it appeared that China wanted to reopen these talks. And then, of course, things went completely awry. Now they're actually talking. So it's no coincidence that there would be this so-called activity that really is a nothing burger China has the right to fly its planes over its own waters and territories, which if you know anything 
about the Taiwan Straits and China, you understand that uh, that median line literally uh, in it crosses over a, a, a terrain that China has every right to fly over. It is its sovereign territory. And the one China principle says it's its sovereign territory. So to move on, we've had multiple reports that China has been confronting the United States on Taiwan. NBC reported that the United States, uh, 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 during the Biden administration's meeting with Xi Jinping, was confronted by, uh, by Xi around the question of Taiwan, where he said that China would reunify with Taiwan, but preferred to do it peacefully. This wasn't a confrontation at all. And here you see the United States walking back their own report. Gina Raimondo said the U.S. Is, did not see any tonal change from China on Taiwan after she was speaking at a briefing at the White House. Um, so this is after media reports that Chinese President Xi Jinping told Joe Biden that Beijing will reunify Taiwan with China. So Gina Raimondo is basically saying, ah, not so fast. There's no real change here. So it was really just a report to scare us. But it comes again amid these elections. They're trying to make us believe that China is trying to um, essentially manipulate the situation. And that uh, uh, the combination of military and diplomatic maneuvers are the ways in which China is attempting to do this. And this completely obscures the fact that the United States is at the root of all the problems, the conflict that is brewing here in this part of the world. NBC News and other media outlets reported on Wednesday, she told Biden in a recent summit in San Francisco, Beijing will reunify Taiwan with mainland China, but the timing has not yet been decided. Ramondo said that she doesn't see any change. I was in the meeting. President Xi didn't say anything to us that he hasn't said before. It was a good discussion between two world leaders. It was frank, positive, direct. Taiwan came up, but no new news. So it was a nothing burger, but they want us to believe there is a threat here. All right. And Nikki Asia, if you want a good idea of what the voice of the collective us is really saying, go to Nikki Asia. They have an article here where they talk about the election. And it says, as the Taiwan presidential race tightens in the final weeks, China is stepping up trade curbs in an apparent influence, uh, in an apparent attempt to influence the key vote. All right. So for those of you who don't know, <laughs> Nikki Asia is an incredibly um, unreliable, but it is, I mean, it's a, um, it's a flagship Japanese media outlet. It's incredibly anti-China. And uh, if you read it, you get a good understanding of really what real China hawks believe uh, in the professional media class. And that's what they're talking about here. The Taiwan presidential front runner Lai ching lead over main opposition rival is narrowed. And it sets the stage for a close race in the final weeks of a pivotal vote. Lai's ticket representing the ruling party leads with 37.3% of support, followed by Hao Yu-Yi's of opposition Kuomintang, the Guomindang KMT, with 33.4%, according to a survey conducted December 19th to December 21st by poster Mai Formosa. Ko Wenji of the Taiwan People's Party trails with 17.7%. So, um, as recently as December 1st, Lai had 37.8%, who was at 29%. So, the gap is closing, all right? KMT has been catching up rapidly since late November after an end of opposition unity talks, said Wen Ti Sung, a non-resident at the NATO Atlantic Council think tank. The tightening race means candidate will be, candidates will be campaigning intensely in the run-up to the vote. They're competing in the January 13th presidential race as Taiwan chooses its next head of state and lawmakers while facing China's aggression. President Tsai Ing-wen's government is fending off Chinese military incursions amid recent Reports of election meddling and disinformation. You see what they're trying to do here? They're trying to connect what China is doing militarily with the elections. They're trying to say that China never ruled Taiwan. 
and it claims it as its own as threatened military attack. You see, this is what they really want us to believe as they're obscuring the fact that the separatist position is actually weakening and that the United States itself is not claiming from its own meeting with Xi Jinping, Biden and Xi Jinping, that there is any indication that China is moving militarily to take Taiwan and to uh, reunify. But they're essentially saying here, all right, they don't even give you very much here. They don't even talk about the economic report. So that's how um, <laughs> that's how uh, 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 crass this all is. They say that trade curbs, they didn't even mention trade curbs once in the article. I didn't even have to read it. This is this is how pathetic this all is. But what China is doing is actually <laughs> the uh, when it comes to this conflict, it's more aligned with reality than anything the United States and its Taiwan separatist forces can tell us. What China is actually saying is that they need to be prepared for the risks caused by secessionist forces. Now, when they say prepared, they don't mean start a war. <laughs> but China is definitely prepared to go to war over this issue if the United States and its separatists on the island provoke it. But as Gina Raimondo said, and I think this is in league with the current U.S. position in the world, that China has not changed its tone. And I think primarily the reason for these comments is because the United States is in no position. What China has done has actually worked, which is bide its time, ensure its military preparedness, increase military expenditure without sacrificing its own domestic economy, and uh, not hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst while taking care of oneself. That is what the United States never does. The United States uh, does the opposite of that. It uh, depletes and and uh, just takes away everything it can, everything it can can take from its domestic economy, puts it into war, starts to prepare uh, for war with the hope that it will be successful. And then it ends up being a disaster. So this is what the Global Times had to say. The Chinese mainland needs to be prepared for the risk caused by Taiwan's secessionist forces and the interference of the U.S. on the Taiwan question as the U.S. is trying to use the island to provoke military conflict between the mainland and the island to contain the development of China, said experts from both sides of the straits on Saturday. Chinese modernization requires a relatively long-term, peaceful, and stable international and regional environment. But the Taiwan question has increasingly become a variable affecting our national security, said Wang Zhechi former deputy director of Association for Relations Across the Taiwan Straits, saying this at the 2024 Global Times annual conference. For the long term, we have preparations in place to contain and destroy the secessionist attempt at Taiwan independence, but uncertainty still exists, so we have to be prepared to prevent the risk. Chao Yang uh, Cheng, president of Sun Yat-sen School in Taiwan and a member of Taiwan's major opposition party, the KMT, said at the conference that during its great power competition with China, the U.S. has tried many approaches, including trade war and side tech war, but these will also cause damage to the U.S. When it plays the Taiwan card, the U.S. is clearly profiting from it. In order to preserve hegemony, Washington will consider using puppets on the island to provoke conflict with the mainland, but it won't let the regional leader of the island decide when and how to do it. So the U.S. is trying to discipline the DPP authorities, including the current regional leader, Tsai Ing-wen, and the DPP candidate for the upcoming election, Lai Ching-te. So they're aware. China is not stupid. <laughs> they are aware of what is going on, right? These are prominent authorities in the KMT. These are Chinese experts. Uh, they know what's happening. They know how China is preparing for this kind of conflict. And so this election is going to be critical. Um, it's likely that the DPP will win, but it's likely that they're not going to win by a very large margin. And it's likely that sentiment around secession is going to continue to be low, okay? It's going to continue to be low. <laughs> this has been shown, okay, over and over and over again, that there is not a lot of appetite for um, independence, so to speak, okay? Um, 
that those who want to maintain the status quo or uh, maintain um, the status quo and decide at a later date represent the vast majority of people on the island. And here is a major poll from uh, the Election Study Center, which this is a Chinese institution. It is a Taiwan-based institution. And here's what they had to say. 32.1% of those polled between 1994 and 2023, this is a longitudinal research study, said that maintain the status quo indefinitely. 32%. 28.6% say maintain the status quo, decide at a later date. Well, that's more than 60%. (laughs) And then you have the green here, maintain the status quo, move toward independence. That still means status quo. Status quo meaning one China, one China principle. So you have over 80% wanting to maintain the status quo. Everyone else remains in the minority. So what China is doing is absolutely the right thing, which is to patiently uh, 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 follow its long-standing doctrine on this issue, which is the one China principle. <laughs> that is its long-standing policy. That is the policy it adopted after it was recognized by the United Nations in 1971. And that is the policy that it has negotiated with the United States for normalization of ties with that country. That is the policy that the United Nations recognizes. All right. That is the policy that um, is the uh, fundamental one that should not be violated. That is the one that the United States continues to violate by meddling in Taiwan's affairs through arms sales, through manipulating elections, supporting color revolutionist forces, supporting the Democratic Progressive Party, and, of course, through ongoing military escalations in the Taiwan Straits, in the South China Sea. Uh, This is what is at stake here in this election. But it's quite clear that the United States has no leg to stand on, that they are actually, their position is actually becoming weaker and weaker. They continue to sound the alarm almost daily over Chinese military aggression. But China is simply conducting military activities around its own self-defense in preparation for a proxy war, which the United States is itself responsible for. The United States stopped funding and arming the secessionist forces in Taiwan, just like in Ukraine, this would end immediately. China would uh, then re-di- would divert its military arsenal again, once again, for its own security as it is doing here. It would no longer need to worry about military conflict on the Taiwan Straits if it were for the United States' continued involvement in this realm. So the United States is the one that is going to be rudely awakened, all right? Rudely awakened. Resolution 275A, I might have said 2751 before. The UN resolution that admitted China into the as the legitimate government of the United Nations, that is the only one that we should be following with regard to the Taiwan question. And any concern about US, about China's military uh, provocations or military activities in this part of the world should be ignored as flat out alarmism. <laughs> the point is, is that the United States has no right to be doing anything that it is doing around the Taiwan Straits. Freedom of navigation, no right. Taiwan is not an independent country and the United States doesn't have any right to do this anywhere in the region, let alone the Taiwan Straits, which are a fundamental part of China. China will reunify with Taiwan peacefully. China will resolve this question in a manner that works for all sides. China has already done this with Hong Kong, with Macau. China has many special administrative regions, those being two, 
where it allows for a great amount of autonomy in a one China to uh, one system to uh, one country two systems policy like in Hong Kong. That is what is on the way for Taiwan should it smarten up, really. Should the authorities smarten up on Taiwan? Should the leadership change and begin pursuing what is vastly beneficial for the people on the island, for the Chinese people on the island and the Chinese people on the mainland, which is a reunified China with no separatism to speak of. That is the case everywhere in the world, wherever separatism, we see it crop up. We see it now cropping up in Serbia. We've seen it in Ukraine. We have seen it over and over and over again. Separatism, uh, color revolutionists, secessionist forces that align with the West, that align with the United States, that align with NATO, and they end up tearing apart uh, the fabric of stability, causing economic mayhem, causing military provocations and conflicts that only destroy the livelihoods of the people, make the world unsafe, bring the most powerful countries in the world closer to a conflagration that could go nuclear. These are not forces that we should be supporting. These are forces we should be condemning. China is not the aggressor here. China is the one attempting to resolve this peacefully. And now it is up to the people on the island to decide. Uh, whether they want to continue forward along the status quo toward reunification or whether they want to be either on a slow or rapid path of becoming a vassal of the United States, which the United States likes to call its unsinkable aircraft carrier. The whole empire is sinking, baby. There is nothing unsinkable. And so it is important, I think, for... Uh, the United States for its vassals in Taiwan, those forces that are willing to uh, saddle up with the United States to uh, get, get the picture and get the lesson here. And the lesson is that there is no change <laughs> with regard to this conflict. China has been moving towards ultimate objective reunification, and now it is only a matter of time given the state of the United States is absolutely deteriorating, its position as an empire is fading and sinking, and its problems are mounting. It's only a matter of time before the tide of history uh, moves in the direction of reunification. And when that occurs, we are going to see, I think, a massive escalation on the part of the United States toward war. And that's what we have to be diligently prepared for as we move in to 2024 and beyond. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. I appreciate all of your support. This channel, however, needs your help. I am seeking to make this channel more sustainable in the long term and upgrade necessary equipment to ensure that this work continues onward and makes progress to give you all of the geopolitical analysis that you all deserve. For that reason, I'm asking you to become a member of my Patreon community at patreon.com slash Danny Haifong. You can find that link in the video description or in the pinned comment below. For whatever amount you choose to give, just know you are supporting independent media that you can't find anywhere else. Thank you so much, and I look forward to the next video.